Matt had it. I'm on the Icosa website right now. So once you stake Icosa, you can add to your stake, right? And it locks in. What does it lock in? A percentage or something that you? Yeah. So there's there, there's a couple different facets to staking, man. Um, but yeah, long story short, you'll be able to stake your hedron. By staking your hedron, you'll be able to earn Icosa, right? So it's not like hedron where everyone got a shitload of free coins. You're actually going to have to interact with the contract to get any Icosa. So it's going to be really rare to start. When you get your Icosa, you'll actually be able to stake that as well and earn hedron and Icosa. And the way that those, all of these mechanisms are going to be paid out are by people selling their HSI stakes, right, to the contract. There's also another facet to it in terms of creating a tokenized NFT in a in a pool. It's only open for two weeks, and it's like a last man standing game. So your APY is dependent on your percentage of the total pool, right? But you can only enter once, and last person standing gets all the APL, APY for that pool. I mean, there's, there's a lot of facets to this. But yeah, long story short, man, you're going to get some, some utility for those free tokens that most people dumped. <laughs> So it's pretty cool. Hey, and on um, Matt Hatter, um, so the adding to the stake part, what's um, how does that work? Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. So like the way that I understand it, that Alex looked at it was, okay, we have this mechanism in Hex where you stake today and you get the absolute best T-share rate right today. It's going to be better today than it was tomorrow. What's the downside to that? Well, you can only get today's T-share rate today, right? Um, so what staking through Icosa is going to allow you to do is one stake per address, but you can continually add more Hedron, Hedron and or Icosa into those stakes. Stakes, right and when you started that stake in the pool has a measure of um, how much your APY or your return is going to be right so if you're continually adding to it think about it like you're in hex terms you're continually getting the absolute best t-shirt rate that you ever could have gotten so it's a, it's a much different way of looking at it which is I mean the game theory is <laughs> it's still blowing my mind right it's it's top tier it's difficult to understand probably a very small subset of even hexakins are going to fully wrap their mind around it in the next week um, but they need to if they have hedron because what else the fuck are you going to do with it? You can sit on it. Price will go up eventually, right? But just like with Hex, if you stake it, why not be earning more tokens along the way? Um, so you have basically 40 days, 40 days to figure this shit out, people. Thank Essentially, you. what it's looking to do is solve the endless dump problem, right? So when you look at something like the incentive token that you're going to get when Pulse Chain launches, if that token doesn't have any utility, it's an endless dump type token. You get it for free and you can just constantly dump it, right? So how do you give something like a Kedron that up to this point has seemed to be an endless dump token utility? Well, you allow staking of it and earning of another coin that's much, much, much more rare, right? And what do you do with that rare coin? Well, you can stake that one too and earn more of that one and the original staked hedron, right? So you're, you're kind of solving this like perpetual feedback loop system within the hex ecosystem of even having a hex stake, right? You stake hex, you get hex and hedron. You stake hedron, you get icosa. You stake icosa, you get hedron and icosa. So it's a self-reinforcing mechanism. I'm pretty sure most people in this room have hex stakes. And if they have hex stakes, you have free hedron to mint. And if you mint that free hedron, now you have another staking mechanism to earn even more yield. So so it's called We Are All the SA. It's the private staking pool, right? It's generating Icosa, just like staking hedron is generating Icosa. I believe it's 14 days where you can enter. Once the pool starts, no one can enter again. It's very similar to Maxi in that sense, where there was just that limited window to mint one for one. And you start that, I believe it's with hedron. So like, or with, uh, let me double check that. Yeah, it's with hedron. So Hexway for that private pool, you're buying a staking NFT. This is interesting. So there's no set price. And I'm just looking on the icosa.pro website there's no set price the price you choose determines the amount of stake points the nft is allocated so you can buy the, the nft for like one hex you could buy it for five thousand hex it's it's of a, a value that you choose but ultimately that value is going to term, determine your yield in the pool relative to all others that also bought the staking nft and how much they paid right and their percentage of the value so that's really fucking unique. otherwise you can just stake your hedron right and earn icosa um there are minimum stake lengths too so i think it's 30 days is the minimum so you have a lot of different options here so the nft does not have a set price you just put in what you as much as you can whatever yeah whatever you want but it's, okay so let's say let's say like you, there's two people you put in one hex right and another person puts in 99 hex so there's 100 total hex right the yield in that pool is going to look like 99 percent of the yield going to the person that put in 99 hex right and one percent of the yield of the pool going to you so it's kind of a game theory mechanic in terms of, in terms of what do you think it's worth right? it's actually wildly so definitely be careful with something like that you know you'd probably want to assess what big players are doing if you have a way to do that um, to see what they're valuing those nfts at for their portion of the yield in that private pool 
Okay, thank you. And we could keep adding to that pool, or it's uh, it's actually only open for I think it's fourteen days for that private pool. If you stake your hedron, you get one stake per wallet address, and you can continually add to that specific stake. Or if you have five addresses, you can continually add to all of those if you wanted. So a lot of different ways to play it. Great, thanks, man. Yeah, man, it's like the staking golden triangle. It's this self-reinforcing perpetual loop of staking and shifting. Yeah, this is big brain stuff right here, man. This this is like the advanced stage of staking. <laughs> you know, if you look at it. Yeah, y'all don't realize in this room right now, but y'all are literally the pioneers of cryptocurrency staking, right? Like people are going to talk about what Hex did, what Hedron did, if Hycosa works the way that it's intended, what Hycosa did five or 10 years from now, right? You're going to be the new cypherpunks, more or less of, of cryptocurrency and staking in particular. But man, that is so cool now that you're able to, you know, you, you choose to actually sell your stake. I mean, that is so damn cool. Before you couldn't do that. Now Hedron gives you the ability to do that. And you can even borrow, you know, well, not borrow, but, you know, advance uh, the Hedron on it or whatever. You know, it's just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's a, it's a long game that he's playing. I mean, you know, Bullis recommended uh, Crypto Sloth's channel. And when he did that interview and I heard 20 trillion hedron had been sold on the market but it's deceptive because it's two years worth of minting plus many 10x bonuses on top of that right hedrons it's a lot more rare than it seems right now and when it comes to selling these hsis back to the contract i mean it's fascinating the contract is, is literally going to borrow all of the borrowable hedron against that not pay it back let it go to liquidation right and then as hedron is is used to bid on that liquidated stake it's burning hedron so you're kickstarting that um, deflationary aspect that hedron has to it while simultaneously rewarding all of the stakers with the hedron from the borrowed right hsi like it's i mean the ins and outs of this sorry bullish i know i know you're probably trying to speak i'm still wrapping my head around this too man but it's it's insane brother no no no, no, no. everything you're saying was spot on um yeah it's gonna it's gonna be crazy what, what's about to happen and uh and i know there's a lot of whales right now who are salty as fuck them man <laughs> oh if they sold all their hedron man they deserve not yeah. to have it they can't even buy their positions back no they can't you know good for them <laughs> they, they got they got what they wanted right i mean you take the opportunity this is a long-term play and shit now look at her hey i know i stack yeah. i wasn't letting that opportunity go man i know i stack i remember the, the first telegram um audio chat we had about hedron and we always knew that alex was going to come out some type of staking mechanism and we always knew that you know we were being patient that this was going to be a long-term play but as you can see like you know the whales that actually dump and you know the other guys they're like oh shit you know i get this shit for free oh it's over inflated this and that like y'all short-sighted i mean the reason why y'all get it for free is for y'all to get the hsi side of liquidation so you could get the hex that's basically why he really tried to bring it out the way he did and, you know, people couldn't see that. Then, you know, I just started posting. I'm like, hey, you know what? Let's help our bag. Let's uh, each buy, like, you know, at least a billion to 10 billion hedron. Just hold it. And, like, you know, your stakes stay in. That helps your stakes at the end. You just, you know, you got more value for your damn stakes. Like, what's going on with y'all, man? Do, do like the, the Shiba guys do. Do like the Doge guys do. I mean, they holding that shit to dear life. How come y'all can't do the same? But y'all bitching and moaning at them about shit going on. No, it's about dedication to to your uh, bags right now. But you know they couldn't see that. I mean, um, um, I guess unless RH says something, then you know, of course, everyone else follows. I mean, it just goes to show you the mind state of um, you know some people. It really is, you know. I mean, you actually got this asset that's correlated, straight up correlated to to the greatest financial asset. Why wouldn't you take the opportunity? I also think uh, we have to say uh, a lot and give a lot of props to Alex because, uh, man, that dude is f***ing awesome. Like, just hearing some of the stuff he's working on is like, you know, based on some of the stuff he told us yesterday, he could have bought a Lambo if he wanted. No, he's buying, he's building data centers and shit like that just to, like, crunch up more numbers, like, better the community. I'm like, look at this f***ing guy. You know what I mean? Like, shout out to Alex. Yeah, you're right. I mean, thank you. It actually took his time to even develop something like this. Yeah, like I, I, I was pocket watching a little bit. And I was all right. Based on what he was saying, he, he, you know, in the construction and stuff like that, this is not even including hardware. We can just assume he probably spent between the two warehouses and rehabbing them construction at least 300 grand, not including whatever data servers and stuff like that. Could have easily bought himself a luxury car. You know what I mean? Like be flossing out like some of these other people do when they get their, their bags. He's like, nope, I'm going to reinvest 